Welcome back to another video and in this one we are going to talk about transposable elements. First we'll talk about transposable elements in general, the general features and then we're going to move into transposable elements that are found in prokaryotes or in bacteria. So starting off, the first point about transposable elements that they are found in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Number two, these transposable elements, they are not highly repetitive sequence, but they're moderately repetitive. Third, around about 50% of the total genome, of the total genome, has got these transposable elements. And finally, these transposable elements are also known as jumping genes. They are known as jumping genes because they can move from one part of the DNA from one part of DNA to another. That is, they can jump from one portion of the DNA to other portions of the DNA. That is why they're called jumping genes. Now, talking about transposable elements in prokaryotes. Transposable elements in prokaryotes or transposable elements in bacterial cells. Now for prokaryotes, there are two different kinds of transposable elements. The first kind is called insertion sequence or IS in short. And the other one are basically known as transposons. Now this insertion sequence, they have only those genes, only those genes that are required for their movement. they won't carry any other gene. They would have only those genes that are required for their movement from one part of the DNA to the other. Whereas in transposons, they not only have, they not only have genes for movement, but also they carry other genes as well. Like for example, uh, they might carry a gene for any antibiotic resistance, for say ampicillin resistance or tetracycline resistance. So they can carry that as well. Now if we look at a typical structure of the insertion sequence, so IES structure, first of all they have a portion, a sequence in the middle which codes for an enzyme which is called transposes. Now this is the enzyme that cuts the DNA, that cuts the whole sequence of transposon or insertion sequence and uh, takes it away to the other portion of the DNA. These transposes sequences, they are flanked by a region on both side, on both side, which are called inverted repeats or IR in short. Say for example, you have TTACG on this, uh, on this strand of the inverted repeat, then you would have the inverted sequence of this, that is GC 
A T T on the other strand of the uh, of of the inverted repeats on the other side of the transposes gene. And apart from that, they are also the inverted repeats or the IRs. They are also flanked by some direct repeats. So they have a direct repeat on this side and also on this side. Right, so this whole thing, this is a typical sequence for the insertion sequence in bacteria. Now, let's look at the structure of transposons. That is the second type. Now, transposons, they are of, again, subdivided into two types. The first one is called a composite transposon. For example, the transposon 10 or TN10. Transposon 10 has got a sequence in the middle which is having a gene of tetracycline resistance. This tetracycline resistance gene, this is flanked by two insertion sequence, two insertion sequence on either side. Although there are two insertion sequences, only one insertion sequence, only one IS would code for transposes. That is one of the two insertion sequence, one of the two transposes in the insertion sequences, uh, that is non-functional. Only one would code for the transposes. Either it would be from this one or from this one, but not from both of them. The type two of transposons in bacteria, they are called simple or non-composite transposons simple or non-composite. The simple or non-composite transposon, uh, one of the example is TN3, or transposon 3. It has got this transposes gene. This transposes gene is flanked by a region on one side by another gene which codes for an enzyme called resolvase. And after the resolvase gene, it has got an ampicillin resistance gene. And this whole thing, this whole, uh, this whole TN3, this is flanked by two inverted repeats on either side. Now one thing you can notice that the transposes that was getting secreted in this one, the transposes that was being made by a composite transposon, for example TN10, that was being synthesized either by the inverted, uh, inverted repeats that is flanking the tetracycline resistance gene, that is the insertion sequence. Because we know that the insertion sequence, insertion sequence has got a transposes gene in the middle. But it would be either from this insertion sequence or from this insertion sequence. But in this case, the inverted repeats, and one more thing, the insertion sequence over here, they are inverted the repeats are inverted. That is, one insertion sequence would be from this side to this side and the other from this side to this side. But in case of simple or non-composite transposon, the inverted repeats that are present, that are flanking the whole transposon, the transposes are not getting made from the inverted repeats that are flanking the transposons. On the other hand, the transposes gene is present inside the transposon. So this is the difference. 
the insertion sequence which is inverted in case of composite transposon in both the sides of the tetracycline resistance gene that is making the transposes enzyme but in case of simple transposon the transposes enzyme or the transposes gene is a part of the transposon itself it is not made by the inverted repeats flanking the transposon now that out of the way let's look into how the transposition actually occurs that is how the movement actually occurs so we're going to talk about the transposition process Now the transposition process, this can be again of two types. The first one is called replicative. And the second one is called conservative or non-replicative. Okay. In replicative, let's say this is my transposon. This is let's say TN3. And uh, these are these are the inverted repeats that is flanking the TN3. And let's say we have another region, another region on another part of the DNA where this TN3 needs to be integrated or where this TN3 would jump to. Now in case of replicative transposon, what would happen? this TN3 would retain a copy in the original site where it was supposed to be but it would replicate itself, it would replicate the sequence and it would integrate that replicated sequence it would integrate that replicated sequence over here it would integrate a replicated version of TN3 and thereby retaining the original sequence at the, uh, at the sender site or at the original site of the TN3. So that is why it is called replicative. In case of conservative, what happens? Let's say this is, let's say this is my TN10 and this is the inverted insertion sequence of TN10 and again we have a recipient site we have a recipient site now what would happen in case of conservative now this TN10 would actually get cut off from the original site would actually get cut off from the original site and there won't be any TN10 present in the original site anymore whereas the TN10 that is cut off from the original site would come and integrate into the region of the recipient region and the region that was flanking the original recipient region. But uh, the TN10 would not, in case of conservative uh, transposition, would not be present anymore in the donor site. It would only be present in the recipient site because the whole sequence, the whole sequence is cut off from the original site and it is donated into the donor site. So these two are the two types of transposition process in bacteria. Is one is replicative and the other one is conservative. With that, we conclude the transposable elements in a prokaryotic cell. We talked about the IS or the insertion sequence, then we talked about transposons which have composite and simple and then we talked about the process of transposition which is replicative and conservative.